What if I told you that nearly every major DeFi protocol depends on a single type of infrastructure that most crypto investors don't even understand? Today, we're investigating Chainlink, the project that quietly became the backbone of a hundred plus billion dollar ecosystem. I'm Shay. I've been researching crypto projects for the last three years and put together over 100 video reviews. Welcome to Deciphering Crypto, where we simplify crypto, blockchain, and AI for everyone to understand. Today, we're digging into Chainlink and the Link token, the good, the bad, and what you need to know before making any decisions. All right, well, what the hell is Chainlink? Well, it's an oracle. It's like a translator service for blockchains. It connects smart contracts to real-world off-chain data. So why does it exist? Blockchains and smart contracts can't access external information like stock prices, weather data, or sports scores on their own. But blockchains and Web3 need this data to function. How big is Chainlink? Currently, the number 13 cryptocurrency by market cap at approximately $16 billion, securing over $75 billion in value across DeFi protocols. By the end of this video, you'll understand whether Chainlink solved a fundamental blockchain problem or just created an expensive middleman. Let's talk a little about the problem and the market context. Imagine you want to create a smart contract that pays out crop insurance when rainfall drops below a certain level. The blockchain knows nothing about real world weather. It's completely isolated from external data. And the market reality is before Oracle, smart contracts were basically useless for most real world applications. They could only process information that was already existed on the blockchain. There are some current solutions like centralized API APIs, they do exist, but they defeat the purpose of decentralized smart contracts if your insurance contract relies on a single weather service that could go offline or be manipulated. You've recreated the centralization problem crypto was meant to solve. So Chainlink's Oracle technology will grab that data and then communicate it to the smart contract so that the crop insurance would be able to be paid. All right, it is a pretty competitive landscape. Direct competitors include like Band Protocol and Teller and AP13 and DI. IA protocol. Although Chainlink has a pretty good position, they were a first mover with over 70% right now of the market share in Oracle services. All right, let's take a look at how it works. So how does Chainlink actually work? The protocol operates networks of independent data providers called nodes that fetch information from multiple sources, aggregate it, and deliver it to smart contracts. There are three key components for Chainlink. The first is going to be data sources, multiple APIs, and data providers. Second is node operators, independent services that fetch and verify data. And then third, aggregation. Multiple nodes provide the same data point and the system takes a weighted average. Now, if we look at marketing versus reality, Chainlinks makes claims of being completely decentralized, although many Chainlink price feeds still rely on relatively few high quality nodes, though this is improving. Now, what is the user experience? If you're a developer, it's relatively straightforward. Just a few lines of code to access price feeds. And if you're a novice undertaking a Chainlink Oracle setup, the learning curve is pretty manageable. If you're like me and struggle just to use some of these apps, well, you're in luck because end users don't interact with Chainlink directly at all. It works behind the scenes. DeFi protocols using the Chainlink Oracle report 99.9% .9 plus uptime. Some complain about update latency during high volatility, but overall, it's pretty damn reliable. Next, is Chainlink innovative? The economic incentive model for Oracle nodes was innovative and and genuinely new. The basic concept of external data feeds existed pre-blockchain. It is now argued with the innovation of cryptographic proofs, reputation systems, multiple data sources, that these data feeds are much more improved now. The data feeds can still face limitations because they are dependent on quality of underlying data sources. So what is the link token good for and how terrible are the tokenomics? The link token is used for a few things. First, staking by node operators. Second, data requesters pay in link for Oracle services. Also, they now have payment abstraction so users can pay in other assets like gas tokens or stable coins, which are automatically converted to link behind the scenes. And third, governance participation. And currently that is limited. So when there is more Oracle demand, that equals more link needed for payments and staking, which equals higher token value. All right, let's break down the economic model. The token supply is 1 billion with 660 
78 million currently circulating. No new tokens will be minted and the supply increases about 7% per year through team and foundation releases. Revenue is generated through transaction fees that are paid in link or converted after abstraction. The tokenomics do create genuine utility, but token value doesn't directly correlate with network usage as much as, as investors might hope. All right, the current valuation as of August 30th, 2025, Link is about $23 a token. Market cap is about 15 to $16 billion. It's widely listed on almost every exchange with deep liquidity. It maintained relative strength during the last bear market, but past performance does not equal future results. Let's take a look at the team and their credibility. Chainlink leadership is really second to none. Sergey Nazarov, who's the CEO, is a Stanford Computer Science, previous blockchain projects since 2014. And then there's Steve Ellis, the CTO, strong engineering background, early Bitcoin contributor, Ari Jules, which is an advisor, renowned cryptographer, formal Cornell professor, six plus years of execution, solid smart team that executes. It really might be one of my first bromances. Who are their funding and partnerships? Initial funding raised from reputable VCs, including uh, Andreessen Horowitz. And they have strong partnerships with protocols Aave, Compound, Synthetics, MakerDAO, and they have enterprise partnerships with Google Cloud and Amazon Web Services. And they also have triad partnerships with Swift, which is a banking network. Their partnership quality is pretty good. Genuine technical integrations, not just marketing announcements. No matter how incredible a team and protocol might look, there are always risks. Technical risk could include Oracle manipulation attacks, possible if not enough independent nodes. Audit findings have been good with very few issues. Also, the protocol is fairly dependent and relies on external APIs and data sources that could fail or be compromised. Then we have some market risks. Chainlink has competition and new Oracle solutions are launching regularly, some with novel approaches. Possible regulatory risks. The SEC hasn't provided clear guidance on Oracle tokens, potential security classification concerns. And then I have my project specific concerns. I don't like how some key price feeds still rely on relatively new nodes. I think there is also a token value disconnect. Network growth doesn't always translate to token price increases. The project is pretty solid, but definitely pay attention to any of these warning signs. One, major protocols switching to competitors. Second, decrease node operator participation. Third, regulatory challenges specific to Oracle services. All right, next we have the roadmap. What are the upcoming Chainlink goals? First, we have execute on Chainlink 2.0 vision, which is basically more Oracle Oracles and their networks providing more services. And there is scale, CCIP adoption, which is cross-chain interoperability, and then grow VRF version 2.5, which is a verifiable random function. This is techie stuff used in games, lotteries, and NFTs. Enterprise integrations, which includes Swift and DTCC style projects moving from pilots towards production. And then new in 2025 worth adding is the payment abstraction and on-chain Chainlink Reserve, and this is a fee conversion into Link uh, to support network sustainability. What is also nice is that the team typically under promises and over delivers, though sometimes slowly. Historically, the team has successfully delivered most major roadmap items, though often behind initial timelines. Let's take a look at some market opportunities. Oracle services could expand beyond DeFi to Internet of Things, insurance, gaming, and traditional finance. Catalyst for growth would be DeFi protocol expansion, world asset tokenization, cross-chain bridge security. Some barriers to adoption could include technical complexity, gas costs, and regulatory uncertainty. So is Chainlink going to the moon or the garbage? Bull case, I give it a 30% probability. If it becomes a standard Oracle and infrastructure for all blockchain, token reaches $50 to $100. The bear case, I give about a 20% probability. Competitors erode market share, regulatory issues, token drops to five to eight dollars a token. And the base case is probably about a 50% probability that maintains market leadership but faces increased competition and the token ranges between 15 and 30 dollars. Okay, the good and the bad. Why invest in Chainlink? You should invest in Chainlink because it's dominant market position with strong moats, critical infrastructure for growing DeFi ecosystem, experienced team with proven execution, real utility, and revenue 
generation. Why you should leave it and find something else. Because of a high valuation relative to current usage, technological advantage may not be permanent, token value doesn't directly track network growth, regulatory uncertainty around Oracle services. I would consider Link a medium to high risk investment suitable for 2 to 5% of your crypto portfolio. Alternative opportunities to possibly consider is Band Protocol. It has a lower market cap, but it's primarily focused in Asia. And there's AP13, which is a DAO governed alternative with different technical approach. There's Teller, which is smaller but innovative mining based Oracle. With all that we have discussed to consider, here is my final grades and assessment. Execution grade. A minus. Consistent delivery over six plus years. Technology grade is a B plus. Solid tech with room for improvement in decentralization. Market positioning is a grade A. Dominant market share with strong relationships. Trust and vision grade is an A minus. Experienced team with clear long-term vision. Competitive advantage gets a B. Strong network effects, but not insurmountable moats. And the overall project grade gets a B plus. What kind of investor is Chainlink a good fit? fit for, investors believing in DeFi's long-term growth, those comfortable with infrastructure investments, and medium to long-term time horizon, two to five years I would expect. Again, maximum of two to five percent of crypto allocation, consider dollar cost averaging. If you are invested in LINK or plan on invest, make sure you pay attention to total value secured by Chainlink Oracles, number of active node operators, major protocol integrations and departures, and then token burn rates and fee revenue. All right, guys, I want to hear from you in the comments. Have you used any DeFi protocols that rely on Chainlink oracles? What was your experience? Or which concern about Chainlink worries you most? Centralization, competition, or token economics? I always love the comments, so keep them coming. If this analysis helped clarify Chainlink for you, subscribe and share. Ring the bell for our follow-up video in six months, tracking their roadmap progress. Share this with anyone researching Oracle projects. They'll thank you for for the comprehensive breakdown. And of course, remember, this is educational content, not financial advice. I do hold about 4% of my crypto portfolio in Link, so let's go. Unfortunately, none of this was sponsored by Chainlink or competitors. Always do your own research and never invest more than you can afford to lose. I'm loving the growth of the channel. Thanks for the support. I'm looking for a sponsor that isn't terrible, so shoot me an email and let's put together some good fun stuff. I will see you nerds next week here at Deciphering Crypto. Take care.